Thank you, Colonel. Now we'll go to uh, Professor Hathaway. Thank you. Thank you to the subcommittee for having me here today, uh, particularly to Congressman Delahunt and his staff who have been extraordinarily helpful. Uh, I've written uh, extensive remarks uh, that I'd like to, with your permission, submit for the record, and I'll simply summarize uh, my thoughts here today. So there's a central principle that I want to uh, establish that are the uh, foundation of my remarks today. And that is that the President cannot make an international agreement that exceeds his own constitutional authority without the agreement of Congress. That's the bottom line. Um, and the rest of my remarks will flow from that. So this means that the President, if he seeks to conclude an agreement on his own, what's often referred to as a sole executive agreement, is severely limited in what he can do in that agreement. As the Supreme Court held in Youngstown, the steel seizure case that I'm sure is familiar to most of you, when the President acts pursuant to an express or an implied authorization of Congress, his authority is at its maximum. When, on the other hand, the President instead acts in absence of either a constitutional grant or denial of authority, he can only rely on his own independent power. So again, he has to rest his arguments, his agreement, entirely on his own constitutional powers. So let's apply this principle to the Iraq agreement. So I was pleased to uh, hear that Secretary Casey is uh, now suggesting that, in fact, the agreement is not going to include a mutual defense guarantee. And, in fact, uh, that is the right decision because a agreement entered in by the President on his own authority could not guarantee that the country would come to the defense of Iraq. That is because although the President is the Commander-in-Chief, he does not have the power to declare war. That is a power that is in fact given in the Constitution to Congress. And therefore, any agreement that would involve a guarantee that the United States would go to war on behalf of another country must be entered with Congress's consent. It is also the case that an agreement entered by the President on his own authority could not appropriate funds unless there's a prior congressional authorization uh, for that appropriation. Uh, that is because, once again, this is not a power that's granted to the President in the Constitution. This is a power that is granted to Congress. So if there's an appropriation of funds in an agreement, it must be approved by Congress unless Congress has already approved that appropriation. And in several cases, Congress has given the authority to the President in advance to enter into certain kinds of agreements. So we may be able to find some prior legislative authority, but you have to be able to trace it at some point to assent by Congress, either beforehand or after the fact in approving the agreement. Third, it arguably could not uh, establish a broad and deep long-term commitment of friendship by the United States to the government of Iraq. Agreements of this kind have almost always been concluded by treaty, on rare occasion by congressional executive agreement, uh, and that is because it envisions a deep agreement to engage in long-term, extensive relationship with another country. And again, this is the sort of power that is generally reserved to Congress. Now let me say just a few words about what could be included in an agreement that is negotiated by the President on his own authority. Uh, the administration has stated that they intend to negotiate a quote-unquote typical status of forces agreement. That has, as they've said, typically been done as a sole executive agreement, and in fact, that is permissible. What is not permissible, however, um, as has already been said, is to include in that uh, status of forces agreement, SOFA agreement, a guarantee to, to come to the defense of another country. What I believe is also not acceptable would be to include in that status of forces agreement immunity for private military contractors. Once again, this would exceed what is typically included in a status of forces agreement and I believe is not within the President's own constitutional authority. It would be permissible, however, for the President to make individual agreements that draw on authority already granted by Congress, as I've said. So, for instance, there's a line in the Declaration of Principles that states there might be an agreement for debt relief. 
that might fall under prior legislative authority granted by Congress. But again, you would want to look and see where there has already been a legislative authority granted by Congress. There has to be an assent by Congress either before the fact or after the fact. Now let me end by saying that even if a president may conclude an agreement on his own constitutional authority, he or she is never required to do so. And in this case in particular, where this is an agreement involving a matter of intense political debate, and as Congressman Rohrabacher so eloquently stated, putting the lives on the line of the American people, that even if you could craft an argument that there are certain portions of this that might be within the president's sole constitutional authority, I would argue that the president nonetheless ought to come to Congress for Congress's consent to the agreement. Not only because I think that's the right thing to do, because it involves the American people in the debate in a way that a sole executive agreement doesn't, but also because I believe it strengthens the hand of the president in negotiations. Congress behind him and to have the word of the American people through Congress behind him as he's sitting at the negotiating table with the other side. And I can say more on this, but I'd say, again, even though as a constitutional matter there may be pieces of this that could be negotiated as a sole executive agreement, I would encourage the president and the administration to seek the assent of Congress in negotiating these agreements and to involve Congress in the consultation leading up to the agreement, not simply present a fait accompli after the agreement has been negotiated. Thank you.